Have you ever been a part of a group? Maybe done something that you wouldn't have done if you weren't a part of a group? Maybe have said something? Maybe you're with your coworkers and they're talking about somebody and everybody chimes in, but you disagree and rather than speaking up, you just stay silent. Maybe you've been in a situation like that where there's a big group and you don't want to cause a stir, so instead you say nothing. Or maybe today, like my kids, when we were at a uh, party, end of the year party, when it came time to pick a snow cone, most of the kids followed the group in front of them. Even though there were multiple flavors, seven to be exact, they picked the two that those in front of them picked, wild cherry and blue raspberry. Hey, I'm Kat Sievert, Family Life Minister here at Desert Foothills, and today we are going to be looking at John chapter 19. Now, you can't tell me uh, cherry is one of the favorite flavors when there's options like strawberry, watermelon, grape, cotton candy, that cherry is the favorite, but there is something to be said about mob mentality. Whether it's something big or small, there's this idea that we don't always speak up even when we disagree with the group. Now we see this all through John 19, and I can't get past looking at Pilate. There's three times, starting in chapter 18 and going on to 19, where Pilate says to the group that he finds nothing wrong, that there is no charge that he can give against Jesus. And their response, the chief priests and the officials to this, is to yell, crucify, crucify to Jesus, that even though Pilate sees nothing wrong, that is their response. You see, Jesus didn't do anything wrong, and Pilate is trying to get out of the situation that he sees as growing as people are getting more and more mad, and he's trying to defuse the situation, and it comes to a point where they say, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be king opposes Caesar. That's in verse 12. Now, this is a turning point because Pilate is trying to find any way to let Jesus go, right? The chapter starts with him being Jesus being flogged and doing things to get Jesus out of this situation. And when the leaders say this, Caesar is for lack of better words, Pilate's boss, right? Pilate's in charge of a region and Caesar is in charge. And Pilate is afraid of one, losing his job or even losing his life. So he's trying to uh, find a way out and yet they kind of force his hand. This mob mentality forces him and finally Pilate agrees for Jesus to be crucified. Now, in verse 19, it says that Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. Now, a notice was this kind of note or thing that they put above the person who was being crucified and explained what the person had done, right? So for the criminals, it would say their crime or their sin or thing that they had done that you would see above their cross during their crucifixion. And Jesus is read like this, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now, Jews read that sign, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. But what a moment, right, that Jesus is next to these criminals, that Pilate is trying to get Jesus out of this problem, that Jesus goes to the cross, and the sign that is on the cross is King of the Jews for everyone to see. Right now, some use it as a mocking tool, and others used it as a way to uh, disagree or to start an argument or even to be silent but do not miss the sign that was above Jesus and the signs that are in our life that Jesus is king. Even in his death and the way he died and rose to fight sin, death, and the devil and the power that he has, Jesus is king. Now I pray that as you read this chapter and remember the psalm burness of what Jesus did for you and for me and the painfulness that he went through that he did it willingly and lovingly with us in mind that there were no other way that we could be with him or conquer death but only through him the perfect person the one that Pilate saw no cause because he is Jesus king of the Jews and he loves each and every one of us may you find uh, Jesus' love for you, and may that 
change things for you that you may share and speak up even against the mom. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for your love for us and the ways that you are at work. Help us to share your love with others in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to you this week. See you Sunday.